If we drive people away who have different views, we'll never be able to test the value of what they, they hold dear. I mean, the, the way this country has always thought that more speech was better than no speech. And, you know, the Supreme Court has always talked about things like a marketplace of ideas or a clash of many voices. If you prevent the debate, how are you going to learn? And that's what universities are for, to learn. That's the ethic of the First Amendment. The ethic of the First Amendment is to promote the so-called marketplace of ideas. And although it is a loose and not entirely accurate metaphor, the general rule in society as a whole is that if government tries to regulate what you say or publish on the basis of its content, then there's a heavy burden of justification for the state to justify it, and the state usually loses. People are at a university to, to learn, and that means not just learning from uh, a classroom and from taking uh, exams and writing, but also to learn from one another, uh, to learn from their fellow students and from their faculty members and other people that they come across on campus. And if you can't even tolerate uh, certain ideas or certain viewpoints, then that doesn't speak very highly of your ability to engage in serious discussion and to actually consider somebody else's point of view. Um, and if that's the case, then I have a hard time seeing how uh, people, will ever, people will ever be able to change uh, somebody else's mind. Um, and so the end result is everybody just becomes very polarized and uh, stubbornly you know, stuck to their, own, uh, to their own points of view. The Leonard Law protects post-secondary students not directly the faculty or the staff, but the students, uh, saying, in effect, whatever rights you would have under the First Amendment at a public university or out anywhere, you know, the general First Amendment uh, doctrine uh, that would apply to you there applies to you here. Furthermore, it also specifically incorporates not just the first, applies not only the First Amendment and the 14th Amendment, but the California Constitution which has arguably a more expansive free speech protection. And the way it's articulated, I would say that students can not only invoke a right to speak, but a right to receive, hear, receive information, and so on. There's no safety in life. And you don't come to, you don't, you don't come to a big university, whether it's UCLA or USC, with people from all walks of life and all over the world uh, to be safe. Uh, you come to learn, you come to, to interact, but safety, there's, there's no place you can go in this world anymore, not that there ever was, and be safe, it's an illusion. Suppose somebody wants to discuss whether or not sexual orientation is a matter of disease. A few years ago, many years ago now, the American Psychiatric Association took a vote and said, no, homosexuality is not a disorder. Well, okay, um, but there's a counter view to that. It's non-mainstream, small percentage, on a broad definition of disorder, persons who are out of the mainstream have a harder time pursuing the things that human beings, all right, that's not a very persuasive case. But suppose you want to do a history of the debate. And some students say, I don't want to even hear the debate. Too bad. That's just too bad. Um, the virtue of the debate is it sheds light on the problems of defining disorder and why some things are not disorder and that whole dispute is a perfect illustration of the fact that there are basic concepts that can be misapplied or, in fact, in some cases are indeterminate. You can go whichever way you want. I think the answer is clear in that case, but it's the debate that counts. I think what's happened in recent years is that Students with dissenting views have been reluctant to express them uh, for fear of being called out or being made to feel bad about their views. and so, so they sit on their views 
And that's a bad thing because they resent it. And the other students who have, say, majority views never get to hear the dissenting views. And that's a bad thing. And I know I, I have, I've had lots of students, like during the election campaign, uh, who expressed to me that they, they, hold, they held different views than the majority did, but they were afraid to speak, to, to, to voice them. That's a bad thing. And if that's where we are as a society, that's, that's just a bad thing. And I think universities ought to do everything they can uh, to encourage people to speak out.